certified massage therapist and registered aromatherapist has just recently returned from Africa. She was part of a group of 20 people that went on a missions trip to the war-stricken northern Uganda region. They joined up with a local family that is already over there doing trauma counseling. They went to help build play equipment, visit orphanages, uh, some discipleship at an IDP camp, which is for displaced persons, and to pamper some women that have been affected by the LRA, and the LRA is the Liberated Revolutionary Army, or as they refer to them there, simply as the rebels in northern Uganda. Please welcome Bridget Kelly. I think so. So let me bear with me oh, for a second. That's funny. Okay. Um, turn this yeah, that's fine. I'll turn this on the other way. It's like a garage door opener. Exactly. <laughs> that someone told you that you would be better off doing something or going and, and being somewhere that it would be better for you. Now it seems like it might have been an okay, but it gnawed at your better judgment, only to find out it wasn't as good as you thought and that you should have listened to your instincts. The no people of northern Uganda have were told that they needed to leave their homes and gather as a huge group of people and that the government would come and protect them from the rebels and they would also provide support to these people. But what they found out when they got there was that they were not protected by the government, that they lost their source of income and that they were means of their support, and they found that they are now dependent on a government that won't be able to protect them and take care of them. All good intentions, but these people then were greatly affected by this war, physically, emotionally, and mentally, the trauma that they all endured. My main role for this missions trip was to provide training on healing touch, to train our group, and then also to schedule this at Living Hope when we got to Africa. Our time in Africa was a whirlwind. We were busy from sunup to sundown. And it wasn't until I got back to the States where I had time to reflect. And strangely enough, what I first thing that came to my mind was on our last day of pampering, there was a group of women that showed up with these purple shirts. Now, considering the environment in Africa, I thought that was strange that they all would have the same color style t-shirt. Well, these women received these t-shirts at the opening of Living Hope. Living Hope opened a facility in Gulu this last fall. It's the second facility. They accommodate not over 900 women at this facility. They provide trauma counseling, spiritual discipleship, skills training for these, and these women are widows from the war. But they also empower them with their children and also that they can bring change within their community. They had given these t-shirts out to all these women. I find it kind of funny that of all the things that I endured in Africa, that purple t-shirt is what I brought home. That purple t-shirt was similar to this one. Restoring dignity. Dignity. The state of being worthy of respect. I'm thinking that these women basically were the spine of, the, of Africa. 
Restoring dignity to vulnerable women. Now that is referring to the trauma that they experienced. And I don't want to make light of trauma, but trauma is relative. Joan, your definition of trauma could have been the gal last night that didn't step up to the plate there. Bob, your definition of trauma is different than Joan's. So they, would you say that they maybe are no different than us? Let me back up. Let me introduce you to the women of Africa. Our first group of women are the mamas at Subi Village. These mamas are widows from the war. They are assigned six to eight orphans that they are to raise. Subi Village is a village of homes, if you will, that is supported by the Toto Church. They provide housing, clothing, food, support, and schooling for everyone involved. Of those six to eight orphans that they are in charge of, half are boys. Chances are those boys have all been abducted in the war as soldiers. These boys, chances are, have killed their own family members. The girls were taken as slaves or as wives for the soldiers. These mamas need to embrace these orphans as their own children and raise them, regardless of all that they have endured these past few years. The other group of women that we came into was Living Hope. Now at Living Hope, this is where I went and we did our pampering for the women. Our first day we had 72 women scheduled we only did 59. But word got out, and by our last day there, we had scheduled 72. We had over 120 women show up. But we were only able to do 108. By lunch break that day, which, by the way, was a much needed break, we... It was hot, and we still had a lot of women left to do. It was that day that I saw those purple shirts, by the way, and those also, I, I wanted one of them. They were so cute, okay? But on that lunch break day, I called over our interpreter and explained to him that, you know, we're going to take a lunch break, and the women sat on the perimeter waiting their turn and that, you know, now would be a good time. If you have an errand to run or if you have something you need to do, you got about an hour to go do that. I didn't want to waste their time waiting for us. Well, he informed me that they had traveled very far that day, some by bike, most by foot, and that they would just rather wait. Well, to add more injury to my guilt, when we did sit down to eat, all those women and all their belongings were nowhere to be seen. They left us to sit and eat in peace and rest. Restoring dignity? Hmm. Our next group, we went and we at the IDP camps. And we had the opportunity to hear some of the experiences that some of these women endured from the LRA. This woman here was telling her story, and she mentioned that her husband was absent while she had to go through this, because he was drinking. And she said that in brief, and she said it with no sarcasm or anger. Now, I thought that caught my attention on that because I know how I would have acted during that situation if I was there. Now, this is not like, you know, my husband's gone for a couple days and, you know, I'm kind of crabby because I have to pick up his slack. No. This woman and her newborn baby were taken to the bush and beaten within inches of death and thrown out into the sun to die. She took ownership of that event. 
This scale at 12 years old was taken at, as a rebel's wife. And as through their travels, in their group with them, they, she was told she had to kill this little boy. She said no. Now that little boy did die at the hands of those within that group. But she stood tall and still said no. As I look at these women, I have such respect for them of all that they've endured. There's no weeping, there's no sobbing, they're not complaining. Restoring dignity. For them, life goes on. These women have my respect. Could any of us go through that and still function the way they do? Subi Village, polite, caring, welcoming, living hope, respectful, appreciative. <coughs> the IDP camp, they were clean. They swept the dirt in front of their huts. There was no junk and waste and garbage anywhere. The women and children worked the fields. And I'm not talking, and they were at hoeing. I'm not talking about a garden. I'm talking about a field. They weren't asking for handouts. They waved as we drove by. They greeted us with a smile and shared the little that they had with us. Remember what I mentioned about listening to someone telling you you would be better off? These women really didn't have a choice at the time. But they at least kept their wits about them and they retain their value. Restoring dignity? Well, as you see, I got my shirt. I really wanted the purple one with the sparkles on it, but this will have to do. How fitting that I should be wearing this shirt. By seeing these women, that we pampered, the w seeing and hearing these women at these IDP camps that have lost their husbands, lost their children, they are the ones that are working the fields, they are the ones raising their children, they are the ones supporting their families, they are the ones that have endured trauma that we will never experience in our whole lives never in a million years. And I think how pathetic we are. You know, the things that we have and the things that we do, it's never enough. We don't respect the things that we have. We don't find any worth in what we have. We are seldom satisfied. You know, I went on this missions trip to provide healing touch. That is my purpose in this world. My purpose is to show my heart in my hands. But what I came home with was their heart in my hands. Where's your shirt? I have mine. Mm. Give us a minute on the clock for some comments.